Okay, so we're back with another episode of the Ask Me Anything. And today I'm going to be covering also in the domain of bioinformatics. And so let's have a look at the question that I will be answering today. So the question is from username. And so the question is, what is the real difference between computational biology, bioinformatics, computational chemistry, chemometrics, or do they apply the similar statistical concept but call it somehow different things? Okay, so here's my attempt to answer this. And in doing so, I'm going to use my tablet in order to make some infographic drawing or just maybe some doodling. All right, so let's do this. Okay, so the first area is computational biology. So let me draw that computational. And then the second one is bioinformatics. Okay, so computational biology and bioinformatics are quite similar. So I'm drawing it side by side. Computational chemistry, let's do that. Computational chemistry. And then we have chemometrics. And I'm going to add one more thing to this. And that is chem informatics. Chem informatics. All right, so the first two fields that I will be comparing is computational biology and bioinformatics. So actually, I have a previous video, part one and part two, where I've shown how computational approaches could be used to make sense of biological data. And so that was actually like a bioinformatics 101. And I'll provide you the link in the description of this video. And so briefly in that video, I recall that I was mentioning the differences between computational biology and bioinformatics. And so both terms are quite similar and some might be using it interchangeably. So based on my own understanding, computational biology is where you apply computational approaches in order to solve biological problems. And for bioinformatics, it is more into the computational aspect. It is essentially development of novel algorithms. It is essentially focusing more on the computational aspect. And so for someone coming from a technical field like computer science or software engineering, I would consider these scientists to be falling into the area of bioinformatics. On the other hand, if someone coming from like biology and they just need some quick tool to perform analysis, they might be using web servers or GUI softwares, then I would say that these scientists belong to computational biology. And I'm sure there are several people who might be using this interchangeably to refer to the same thing. And so in a nutshell, that's essentially how I believe it is. So computational biology is more into the utilization of computational approaches to analyze the biological data and also to make sense of that while in bioinformatics the goal is to apply more sophisticated or advanced concepts in computer science in order to develop new tools in bioinformatics in order to help wet lab or bench scientists make sense of the data so essentially you could think of a software engineer or a computer scientist who are developing solutions and so these are referred to as bioinformatics tools tools for which they have already developed some form of programs and the scientists who will be using that they might be also writing some simple scripts and so they will be referred to as computational biologists okay so for computational biology i'll say apply existing computational tools to solve biological data problems but for bioinformatics develop novel computational approaches or tools to tackle biological data problems. So you see here that the common theme is biological data problems. So the computational biology aspect is to apply an assisting approach, computational approach to make sense of the data. So the emphasis there is to obtain biological insights. Whereas for in bioinformatics, the goal is to develop new tools or new algorithms. And so the ultimate goal is to provide new 
and state-of-the-art bioinformatics tools. Okay, so this is the answer for the first part. Let me move the computational chemistry, cheminformatics to the other paper, to page two. Okay, so these three are quite similar. Let me first start with the chemometrics. So chemometric was a field where computers was recently being introduced. And the thing is, there's a lot of data in industrial chemical. And so there are data such as like spectroscopy data, like coming from infrared spectroscopy or mass spec or meaning mass spectrometry. So this area has a lot of variables that are computed for the chemicals that are being investigated. And so in the industrial chemistry domain, the emphasis is on optimizing the, the industrial processing. So actually I've created or written a book chapter about this. Let me find this one moment. Okay, and so in the book chapter that I've written, and I think it's going to be released sometime in the year 2021. And so I'm gonna read it for you from the introduction part. So I've written a section about brief history of chemometric and comparing that with cheminformatics. So here I've written that the historical developments of the field of chemometric dated back to the 1960s and the term chemometric was coined by Svante Wold who is a Swedish researcher and the term was coined in one of his grant or research grant application and it was used for the first time in 1972 and in parallel actually the field of QSAR or quantitative structure activity relationship was also started in the early 1960s as well where Cohen Hans and his colleague Fujita developed this approach called quantitative structure activity relationship. So that is essentially how in modern times we're using machine learning in order to make predictions of the solubility of molecules or to predict the bioactivity of molecule. So this area is called QSAR or QSAR and it is the area that I'm predominantly doing in my full-time job at the university where I do research into building QSAR models. And if you come to think of it, the field of QSAR, the precursor work to the development of the QSAR area was actually can be dated back to 1863 where a researcher by the name of Cross he observed a relationship between the toxicity of primary aliphatic alcohol to the water solubility. And so back at the time, such relationship was observed that there's a relationship between the toxicity of the alcohol with their solubility, the water solubility. And there are several studies that have been released afterward that eventually led to the development of QSAR in 19. 60s and the field of chemometric is predominantly being used in order to study chemical data at the industrial level and mostly are involving the use of spectroscopy data because spectroscopy data is usually of high dimension where there are countless number of descriptors in the thousand to ten thousands scale and so that actually led to the development of the principal component analysis where high dimensional data will be scaled down to a lower dimensional form. And so as you can see here, chemometrics and cheminformatic is quite similar, but cheminformatic is more into big data. So chemometric was developed in a time when there was just the introduction of computers. And so computer played an instrumental role in allowing chemometric calculations. As for cheminformatic, aside from the introduction of computers, the advancement in database or data storage led to the development of the field called cheminformatics. And at the same time, the area of QSAR was a major player for cheminformatics. Because in cheminformatics, there's a lot of chemical data that we need to have a place for it to be stored. Data storage. So here you can see that in chemometrics, the data is quite wide, meaning that there will be a handful of compounds, whereas in cheminformatic, the data is both wide and long, meaning that there will be large chemical library. Okay, so let's continue with computational chemistry. All right, so computational chemistry it's quite similar to cheminformatic, but then the origin of the field of computational chemistry had its origin from quantum mechanics. And so I'll say origins from 
quantum mechanics. And sometimes it's called quantum chemistry, aka quantum chemistry. And so back at the time in quantum mechanics, the goal was to study the properties of molecule and the properties of molecule pertaining to the electrons. And so in chemistry, we know that each atom are made up of electrons and protons as well, and also neutrons. And so the collection of atoms will be connected in different arrangement in order to give rise to molecules. And so atoms will be connected through single bonds, double bonds, triple bonds, and the combination of different type of atoms, right? It could be carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. And so the different combination and the different type of connectivity will give rise to different molecule. And each atom will be different in the terms of the electrons. Some are electron rich, some are electron poor. And so such disparity will give rise to the unique properties of molecule. And that is why some drugs are quite reactive. Some drugs are more inert and they are less reactive. And so we can say that the properties of drug molecule or compounds are governed by the atom and the atoms are governed by the electrons, okay? And so in quantum mechanic or computational chemistry, the aim is to compute the molecular property of compounds. And so if we're thinking in terms of machine learning, computational chemistry will allow us to compute the molecular properties in terms of the electronic configuration of the molecule. And such property, such as the total energy, the distribution of charge in the molecule, and also the, the orbital energy of the highest occupied molecular orbital, and also the energy level at the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, which is having the acronym of HOMO and LUMO. And so both of these properties and other like charges or energy, they are able to be used as molecular descriptors. Okay, and so, so essentially we can calculate the molecular properties. So we can calculate the properties and they are able to be used for machine learning purposes. Okay, so actually this is a very high level view of the three fields that we see here but for the utilization in the field of machine learning, so the utilization of chemical data in the context of machine learning, I think this is quite enough for us to have an understanding at the high level. So we're gonna be seeing here that, let me do a recap. So in chemometric, the dimension, the high dimension or the number of descriptor will be quite large. So if we think of it in terms of the data frame, it will have many columns or wide. And the number of rows will be quite moderate to few numbers. So therefore the number of compound will be medium sized. Whereas in the field of cheminformatic, the number of descriptor will be large and the number of rows or the number of compound will also be large as well because of the high number of compounds. But then for the chemometric, we're focusing more on the properties, right? So therefore the properties will have several columns whereby it's coming from spectroscopy or experimental measurement. And so we could see here that chemometric and cheminformatic, they're quite related. And if we're taking a closer look into the molecular properties, then it is the field of computational chemistry which comes from the field of quantum mechanic, which is essentially AKA quantum chemistry. And so this will allow us to compute the molecular features or molecular property in terms of the electronic configuration of the molecule. And so we can see here that these properties will feed into the cheminformatic area because it will be stored in big databases. And so such big chemical data will then be used by machine learning. Okay, and so I'll be sharing you the infographics drawn today. And if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet done so, hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.